meteorologist Mark Molnar with your special 2017 hurricane outlook for the Atlantic Basin, including the Atlantic, the Gulf of Mexico, and the Caribbean. Let's take a look at the factors affecting this 2017 hurricane outlook. Provided by Media Marks, Weather Northeastern. Let's get right into the particulars. Of course, starting off with the storm names all the way from A to Z. We did see the A name storm already, so that is checked off the list here. It's done and gone. So my forecast will be in addition to the A name storm here. Let's get right into my forecast numbers. We're going to look, I'm thinking it's somewhere around that 14 to 15 name storm. So taking it a little bit a little bit down from last year, but not much, still above normal. We're looking at about seven of those becoming hurricanes. And I'm thinking about potentially three to four major hurricanes here. And here's why. This is what I'm thinking here. Many people are hinting the possibility of El Nino later on in the season. Even if that were to start to develop, the effects wouldn't be felt until much later in the year. And right now, the odds of an El Nino happening are not that good. In fact, they're well below 50% at this point. So let's get right into the sea surface temperatures. I'm going to show you across the Atlantic here. We're looking at anomalies. This is like degree difference from normal. Across the East Coast area here, right off the East Coast, we have temperatures well above where they normally would be. So we have a pocket of warm water as well as towards the Gulf. It's here in the central Atlantic, we have some cold water, cold anomaly going on, but we have some warm air or warm water here off the Cape Verde as well. So this could play a little bit of a role, but as the season progresses, this should kind of mix out for the most part. Now with El Nino later on in the season, if that were to develop, which I don't think at this point it would have much of an effect, you'd have to deal with a lot of wind shear in the upper levels of the atmosphere. At this point, I'm not really expecting that to be much of a problem. And let me show you here off the coast of the South America, the west, the Eastern Pacific here. Taking a look, sea surface temperature anomalies. Yes, they are about 0.5 degrees Celsius, maybe some areas 1, 1.2, 1.4. But right now, this is not indicative of an El Nino at this time. So the important factor here is we're looking at a very neutral type season. We're looking at a season in which we could see no La Nina and no El Nino. So we're right mixing right in between the two factors here. So that makes it a little bit interesting. I still think we'll see a slightly above normal hurricane year. Last year was quite the interesting year to say the least. And we did see a lot of major hurricanes last year. This year, we'll tone it down just slightly, but we're still looking at that slightly above normal as has been the trend the last several years. Getting right into the particulars for your popular storm tracks that I'm expecting based on trends and historical trends and what I've seen so far with all the telekinetics this year. Taking a look, I do expect a big Bermuda high to really block here, push and develop to the east here. And any of these storms that are coming off Cape Verde, I think we'll see a pretty robust Cape Verde season here and propagating all these storms to just off the East Coast and then potential recurve. Some of these will recurve pretty close, so we'll have to watch it. Gulf of Mexico storms will have a tendency to come up and ride up the Appalachians into the Northeast, so we could have some flooding problems for portions of the eastern states here. Some of those ones that come inland and dump a lot of precipitation. And take a look here. I'm even looking at maybe a slight revival here to the Caribbean. We didn't see much of a storm outbreak here across the Caribbean until the latter portion of last season. But I do expect that to open up a little bit more this season. So, and of course, the first named storm was way out here, just west of the Azores. So I do expect a much above active. So you'll see a lot of these come out here and recurve. So that that could be where a good portion of our storms go. But not, not to say a lot of them, about half of them will come pretty far west here. And we could have to deal with them. A couple East Coast landfalls and maybe some here in the Gulf of Mexico too. Now the key is... I'm not expecting major blockbuster major hurricanes. As I said, probably three to four major hurricanes, maybe one or two of those making it close to the United States or potentially affecting the United States. But that being said, 
we may have to worry about a lot of these storms, these weaker storms that come inland and dump a potentially dangerous amount of rainfall because flooding seems to be a major issue here as of late here into the east with all the record rainfall so far this year. So I'm going to continue to watch it here at Media Marks Weather Northeastern. As I said, this is interesting because this is neither a La Nina or an El Nino year. Yes, there is a slight chance of El Nino developing by late summer, early fall, but its full effects would not start to translate until later in October, November, and that would be the well, the very tail end of the hurricane season. So that being said, that is what I'm looking at for this hurricane season. So I can't really show you a La Nina map or an El Nino map. The sea surface temperature anomalies here in the Atlantic, they will play a role the first half of the season. But as I said, that cold pocket in the central Atlantic will eventually begin to mix out. So we could make it well through halfway or slightly more through the alphabet once again this year for hurricane 2017. I will update you middle point of the season with another outlook and addressing this hurricane season 2017. I will always keep you informed of all the latest developments here at Media Marks Weather Northeastern.